Welcome everybody. This is the God's Final Jubilee program. You're watching. Uh, your, I'm your host, Dan Goodman. Good to have you with us tonight. Uh, this is uh, the record. The day of the recording of this is actually Easter Sunday, late uh, late in the evening. And but I want to share some important things with you. I want to I want to share some things about Passover, but I want to also want to talk about some things going on in the world, uh, right here in our country. You know, people are always asking me about some end time things. Uh, for instance, people. Uh, People are always asking me, how, why would people give in, especially here in America, why would we give up our Constitution? Why would we give up our liberties? Uh, why would we do that uh, to, uh, and give in to the one world powers and our dictatorship? Uh, well, are you paying attention? Are you paying attention to what's going on? This little thing called the Corona-19, the, the COVID-19, the coronavirus. Do you realize what that little invisible thing has done? It has robbed you. Well, it hasn't robbed you. You have surrendered to the government your liberties. Now, I just did a show uh, for Prosser News. It's going to air uh, here shortly. Uh, in fact, this week, uh, that show will air. Uh, you can watch it on YouTube. It comes out on Wednesdays usually, and you can watch it on Fridays on television. I did a, a half-hour show. I talked about some of the things that I'm going to share with you today. Um, only I probably went into more detail than I will in this show, but... Uh, um, you know, the, the, do you realize that, the, that this little invisible bug has, has caused people all over our country to surrender liberties and caused us to uh, go in debt several trillion more dollars that our grandchildren and great-grandchildren will have to pay? Uh, it, it'll never be paid anyway, but uh, do you see how easy it happened? Now, now think with me. Um, the one world government, how, how's it going to happen? It's going to happen through a crisis. It's going to happen by people in fear, maybe a financial collapse or something like that. Some, something like that causes people to turn to who? The government. The government steps in and says, we'll take care of this. We'll, we'll, we'll finance everybody. We'll give you money. We'll give you food. And you, 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 become, you become a globalist or a dictatorship. Uh, you become a, a servant of the government. It's, it's, it's happened right now with this little bitty thing that's going on. Some of you, some of you think it's a bigger thing than it is. Um, some of you got the idea that this, this, this corona thing is bigger than it is. It's not. In 2018, 80,000 people died of the influenza bug. The influenza flu, the normal everyday flu that comes every year. Uh, 80,000 people died. Three months ago, most of you didn't know that. You know that now because it's being talked about, but nobody knew that. It wasn't in the news. Uh, you, didn't, you didn't hear about sh hospitals being overrun. No, no hospital was overrun. You didn't hear about people running out of ventilators. You didn't hear uh, 24 hours a day news reports. No. So what's different today? What's different today is there is an agenda. What is the agenda? The agenda is we've got to destroy the economy so that we can destroy a man, a man named Donald Trump, who is the president, that they've been trying to bring down for four years. This is their last shot at it. And uh, personally, I think they're going to fail. But that's what's going on. And uh, listen to me. This, uh, there's been, uh, as of right now, there's uh, maybe 21,000, 22,000 have died. Now, that's, I'm sorry about that. I'm not happy. But that's a lot less than, do you know how many have died of the flu this year? Fifty some thousand already. Um, so let's put this in perspective. And by the way, of the, of the 20 some thousand that have died, this is a fact. Over half of them died of other causes. In fact, 90-95% 90, of all the deaths from the virus, they even said this on the news conference the other day. 90, 95% of them had two or three other serious health conditions. And so when they get this virus, their body can't handle it. So they're not really dying of the virus. So, you know, you're not going to hear most of this on the news. <laughs> what's, what's, what's going on? There's an agenda here. And I'm afraid God's people have fallen for this agenda. God's people are not fighting. They're fighting each other. Preachers fighting other preachers. You didn't shut your church down. You don't care about people. Uh, well, you, you, you shut your church down. You're, you're a compromiser. I mean, fighting each other. Instead of, fight, instead of sitting back and realizing what's going on, what's, the, what's really going on behind the scenes. It's simple. It's 24-hour-a-day hype 
to try to bring down a system, an economy, so they can bring down a president. You say, oh, nobody would do that. Nobody would kill people. Nobody would use something like that if you don't get it. <laughs> if you don't think that the liberal crowd and the abortion crowd, and the globalist crowd, and the climate change crowd, if you don't think those people, Pelosi and Schumer and, and, and these guys, if you don't think they're capable of this, you haven't watched what's going on for the last three years. I mean, look what they did to Kavanaugh. That, he was an innocent man, still, and he, my, that was about destroying a president and protecting abortion. Oh, my goodness. Um, castless society, brother. Gern, how are we? How is the castless society going to take place? How, how would we ever give in to that? We already have. Now, actually, we're already a castless society. They just let us continue to use cash, but we're already a digital money society. There's not enough cash in the world to to to, to cash in all your money at the bank. It's digital. It's in a computer. It's it's. There's not enough paper money in the world. Uh, in American dollars, if everybody went to cash their money in, it, not even a fraction is there. It's digital. We're already cashless, but they still allow the use of cash. But that could end. Look, look have you heard people talking about the fact that money, you can transfer this, this disease by handling money? You know, you go to the drive through you, uh, you say, well, we're protected. We're, we're apart. We're, they can't. And you hand them money. And if you get the virus, they, they claim the, the person in there will get it. You say, oh, no, they got gloves on. Yeah, they got gloves on. Then the next person drives behind you, and they hand you your bag or your money, your change, the next guy with them same gloves. It's, it's, it's strange. So we got to get rid of cash. Can, have you heard that? Have you heard about uh, uh, immunizations for, for everybody for this? Have you heard Dr. Fauci recently talk about getting papers? Everyone that gets immunized to get it, get documentation so that he can prove that he's immunized so that he can go so that he can uh, remove his seat belt and walk freely around uh, along uh, inside the cabin <laughs> yeah where's this headed this is this is this is right out of the bible this is right out of uh, globalism and the mark of the beast and everything you then read about Bill Gates and what he's working on, and uh, he's wanting to immunize the world and put a chip in it. And uh, of course, he's not saying it's the mark of the beast, but it certainly will lead to that. And uh, by the way, most people here in America are 100% for it. Hey, let's immunize everybody for the sake of saving lives. Let's all get immunized. And by the way, those who refuse to get immunized, they're going to be slammed and shamed and hated and talked about by other Christians, just like churches that haven't shut their doors have been ostracized, shamed, and criticized by other churches. The same thing will happen with the immunization. Same thing happened in Germany with the Jews. See, in Germany, uh, the virus was, was, a, was a race of people called Jews. They were the virus. And Hitler talked to everybody in there, we got to get rid of this virus. And if you didn't stand with them against this virus, your neighbors in your community would, would shame you. And you'd be called a Jew lover. See, it's a parallel. It's, it's just like what, it, this has already happened before. Oh, several things here. Um, how will the mark of the beast be instituted? You're seeing it. My goodness, this coronavirus ought to be a lesson for a prophecy people today. How easy it is for all and how quickly it can all happen and all will happen. And, uh, and by the way, we don't know yet how this is going to end <laughs> and what liberties we're going to have and not have when this is over. Because most Bible-believing Christians have already surrendered their liberties. The government didn't take them, that you surrendered them. Immunization for all. How will we get Americans to give up liberty? Very simple. Very simple. A crisis. A crisis. It's all it takes. It's all it took here. An invisible something in the air caused the American people to surrender their liberties. <laughs> yeah. It's all it took. Church shutdowns, mandatory quarantines, telling you what you can and cannot buy in the store, telling you which stores can be open, which can't, whether you can go out and go waiting out in the beach or not. Liberties have been surrendered. Interesting, huh? 
All right, let me close with this, something about Passover. Now, just a few days ago was Passover, right? For the first time, for the first time in a few years, and this happens every few years, but this year, Passover happened to be on the same day as it was 2,000 years ago when Jesus died on the cross. Now, I know there's a lot of confusion about this, and some of you like to argue this, but I'm telling you, Jesus did not die on Friday. He died on Wednesday. And uh, he went to the cross at 9 a.m. on Wednesday, at 12 noon on Wednesday, which, by the way, was the 14th of Nisan, the 14th of Abib. He dies on the cross. At, at, uh, he, he's on the cross at 9. It gets pitch black at, black at midnight, or noontime, I should say, 12 o'clock. At 3 p.m., he, uh, he gave up the ghost, said, in, in thy hands I commend my spirit, gave up the ghost and died. They came to break the legs because the high Sabbath was coming up. Not Saturday, the high Sabbath was Feast of Unleavened Bread. If you check Leviticus 23, you'll find that that's a high Sabbath day. There are many Sabbaths. Everybody gets confused about the Sabbath. And they think, oh, this had to be Friday because the next day was the Sabbath. No, you're, not, you're wrong about that. Uh, Saturday is a Sabbath, but this is another Sabbath. This is a high Sabbath. Um, and it's called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It begins at 6 p.m. on that night. Three hours after Jesus died was the high Sabbath. That's why they had to get them off the cross. They came to break the legs. They did break the legs of the two thieves, uh, and they suffocated and died. And one of them thieves went to hell. The other one went to Abraham's bosom and met Jesus there. Uh, Jesus was there ahead of him because he was already dead when they came to break the legs. And uh, so 3 p.m., Jesus is dead. They take him off the cross. I believe he's placed in Joseph's tomb at 6 p.m. Now, if you understand how the calendar works in Israel, in Bible days, all the way back to Genesis 1, the Bible says the evening and the morning were the first day, and the second day and the third day. When does a day begin in Israel? It begins in the evening at sundown, basically 6 p.m. Uh, that's when a day began, and a day would go from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m., uh, Nissan the 14th, Passover, started at 6 p.m. the evening before. That early in the morning, Jesus is arrested. He's brought before uh, Herod and Cephas, Caiaphas, and, uh, and eventually Pilate, and he's put on the cross at 9 a.m. Um, and then uh, at 3 p.m. he dies. And three more hours, it's going to be the next day. So 6 p.m. becomes Feast of Unleavened Bread. It becomes the 15th of Nissan. It becomes the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It becomes a Sabbath, a high Sabbath. So Jesus is in the tomb at 6 p.m. Jesus said, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights, even so must the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. So at 6 p.m. he's in the tomb. They seal the tomb at 6 p.m. Do the math. Wednesday at 6 p.m. to Thursday is one day. To Friday is two days. To Saturday is three days. So Saturday night at 6 p.m. is exactly three days and three nights, 72 hours exactly. I believe Jesus rose from the grave. The stone was rolled away at 6 p.m. Uh, on Nissan the 17th on Feast of First Fruits, because 6 p.m. Saturday is Sunday. We call it Sunday. The Bible calls it first day, first day of the week. Jesus rose from the grave. When the, when the women showed up, Mary and them, they showed up early in the morning. Guess what? He was already gone. Now, we don't know what time they came. It might have been four in the morning. We don't know. He'd been gone for hours. And, uh, and the two men in white apparel say, Whom seek ye? You know, why seek ye the living among the dead? Uh, he is not here. He is risen. <laughs> and uh, so, all right, so that's one thing. Same day. This year, the same day as Jesus, when Jesus was put on the cross, Passover this year was the same day, Wednesday. Secondly, for the first time, in, oh, secondly, it was a supermoon. Of course, Passover is always a full moon. But this year, it was a supermoon, which means the moon was closer to, your, to the earth than it, than it has been all year. And uh, so this was a supermoon, whether that means anything or not. Thirdly, this is interesting. For the first time since the first Passover 3,500 years ago, for the first time since Exodus 12, the Jews were quarantined to their homes on Passover. Remember Exodus 12? They were to put the blood on the doorpost on the 14th day. They were to choose the lamb on the 10th, watch it for four days. On the 14th, uh, they were to kill that lamb. They were to eat that lamb. They killed the lamb, by the way, at 3 p.m. They killed the lamb. 
And uh, they ate it. They had to eat it all. They couldn't leave no leftovers. And then because it, they had to be done by 6 p.m. because it's unleavened bread. It's a high Sabbath. And, uh, and then they had to get all leaven out of their houses. So, um, so in, Bible, uh, in Exodus 12, they ate the lamb at, uh, at 3 p.m. They had the blood on the doorpost. And they had to stay in their house or the firstborn would die. They had to stay under the blood. You know, there's a lesson there. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. You and I are under the blood. That's why we're going to heaven. But the blood of Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And uh, for the first time in 3,500 years in Moses' day in Exodus, for the first time since then, the Jews were quarantined and required to be in their home on Passover. Interesting. And another, another one here. Uh, quite possibly, this could be the 2,000th year of the church age. We don't know for sure, but it's very possible that this year is the 2,000th year. Now, if you understand what I believe, I believe we're going to have 6,000 years and then Christ comes. I believe there's 4,000 in the Old Testament, 2,000 in the church age, and then the 1,000-year kingdom age. So you get what I'm saying when I say if we're in the, we could be in the 2,000th year. If we are, the Lord's coming this fall. So, and lastly, we're at a strange time in Israel. You got two leaders. You got the two Benjamins. Isn't that strange? And I don't have time to get into that, but uh, all right. Well, I hope, uh, hope this has been uh, of interest to you tonight. I hope I've given you some tidbits to think about. And uh, I really believe we're in the last days. I believe these are exciting days. I believe the Lord's coming soon. And uh, make sure that you're born again. Make sure you're saved. If you don't know for sure you're going to heaven when you die, contact me. I'd, like to, I'd be happy to help you understand how to be saved, how to be born again. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.